Good evening and welcome. Welcome to our responses to Until. This is Brody Parrish Craig. I'm Lynette Thrower. And tonight you will be experiencing our poetic responses to Until. Diminished humanity. Human light in the world grows dim, dimmer, dimmest when dim, dim, diminished humanity reduces us to dim-wittedness, dims our vision, demeans our creator, demands darkness over light, dismisses love, destroys our capacity to love, stagnates, stifles, suffocates. Steen said, we don't have to feed the darkest parts of ourselves. Liminal trespassing. Is my body up to code or violation? What statement of the law took up the lawn and couched inside our grass the hint of handcuffs along the neighborhood? And white noise ordinances don't interrupt, interrupt the fence held high as black-faced long jockeys their history without interrogation. And the neighborhood contains the grass you cut too short, another good man's life, and here is all we have. We're orbiting the city that outlawed, outlawed two lifted eyes need some spiritual to speak of without cops, without cops, without cops. The green slide beside the street end where black children bend their knees. In prayer tonight, I'm looking for a sign that both of us can stay alive. And here we are as God's clear-headed web of beads, the dew in weaver's orb, weaver's orb, we roll our teeth across the silk line, pray for some stranger I call God, a copless chorus mouth picket free song. Eroding humanity, you are not pro-life. If the conditions of the canine, feline, equine concern you more than the conditions of your human, queer, trans, black, indigenous brethren and sistren, and if the chain about the neck of the canine, feline, and equine is egregious, but the callous knee pressed against the innocent neck of your human, queer, trans, black, indigenous, Brethren and sistren is palatable, and if you cringe at Black Lives Matter, but pay tithes to Blue Lives Matter, if you advocate for the fetus in utero, but turn a blind eye to the hungry child in the ghetto, you are not pro-life. Headlights. I hear of the green book your body left to drive until the night was more than whitewashed tooth was more than grimaced tongue, so many gates white cloud-eye gods will keep through Shreveport's string-lined neighborhoods. Another morning forced you to keep driving, keep on driving without ends of green screens, countryside, all plotting, all plotting generational as wealth that took the corner, the covered face of MLK beside Southern University, the newly built Capital One Bank, the arm's length weeds around his body, the parking lot that crept around the plot that took up space and land, the city won't upkeep any black man's memorial, but eulogies on the edge of town ring open at the courthouse. Jesus comes to every protest, Christ's body on the block to chant a song into the megaphone, a raised hand prayer and worship to lift another chant up louder than the siren, then gas and rubber bullets of the Lord they kept fenced in, segregated heaven of the country's infrastructure, roads to take or leave are laced with cops, plot cut with violence, if heaven is the black block at the protest, if heaven is the cop car overturned is Jesus' tabletop, the courthouse reeks of power placed into the wrong apostles' hands, whether handcuffs come on or off will flicker liberation in tonight. Bigot's confession and prayer. Bless me, Father, for I have misunderstood. I assumed my Lord gave me dominion over all the darker hue. I presumed his supremacy granted me and mine supremacy over them and theirs. So I donned the white hood that entitles my white hood power over all those boys and gals in the hood. Bless me, Father, for I have colonized, marginalized, disenfranchised, and ostracized the savage sons of Ham. It was for their own good and ours. Ah, hey, may the scales of bigotry fall from my eyes. I see now. I've been drowning in a sea of self-loathing. Hi, may they land heavily on the scales of justice. I see now these balances were never calibrated in my favor. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. 
what held. In plain sight, dagger held in the light of day that cuts through heaven's intersection. At the crossroads, one brave black girl almost meets his knife, his white hand held as if his blood was on the line because her eyes met his. My body caught beside her as I run from the sidewalk to the traffic light. Suburban, common, nothing notable, unless and then until the car stops. Shadow of a man we can't outrun, sudden and sharp, he jerks the driver door. The centuries that came within the gnash of blade, his teeth shit grin of generations. Eyes hot flame across the intersection, burning cross into the blade he held. As close as notion he could turn a black girl to a ghost with no recourse. And when the cops show up, they keep him free from harm again. They question us, but never why a knife could slice through town within a white man's hand. Another white man's hand held up by our complacency with violence. White hand that held up traffic, knife and city here unfazed. We can't outrun the future sharp is what led us here into the streets. Where I held my breath, she raised her voice. She held her fist, herself, her future. Never flinch, won't run away as history collides and scrambles us. Straight toward the blade, his future held and held on separating skin from skin. Her future held on breast return. A hollered at the crossroads, she pointed her own questions until he finally dropped his knife. She held her stance despite, despite the slice of air almost between us, despite the glare crossing his face, a flame of rage at the powerful split second sight of a black girl held, held high, her hand held higher than his own, her hand held higher than the God he thought was him. Reflections on Mr. Baldwin and Mr. Cave. Black boys like Fani are incarcerated from the time of conception by the reality that there is less room for them outside their mama's uterus than within. Pronounced guilty, sentenced and ghetto imprisoned for being expelled from the womb into a world that favors the descendants of the passengers of those other ships. Declared guilty for inhaling the oxygen of the elect and occupying space reserved for the elite. Pronounced guilty for recognizing his humanity, daring to have a dream, and demanding by any means necessary those unalienable guarantees outlined in that declaration of double standards which assures life, liberty, and the pursuit of all things happy. But black boys like Fani can't live, can't pursue, can't get happy. They've been stripped of the rights of citizenship in the motherland and now exist at the mercy of overseers in the new land. The final decree, guilty for living life, guilty for demanding liberty, guilty for pursuing happiness. Verdict. Deliberately, cops cross black people out like names. The good book burning into bookings, markers, graves, another devil's white and blue blood playing God's red line. Full stop for death and justice turned to a jury's deliberation. Liberation never comes from statehood, objectivity or property, from police prayers and suppers we don't know to be our last. We must outlast our fear, we must uncross our arms and look into the future and the past and let it burn. Build up our siblings, create kindling from our flame to let our wings come street side. God knows what we could be. See, this cloud could predate heaven, but you're busy playing God and turning ghosts. Crystal clear, tell the proud boys on the mountain we have come to bring them down to earth. A surging choir through their blue boys' bluffs. God's honest truth, do you pray with the same knees you break men's necks and call it bread? And why pretend that half-assed crumbs repent the siblings taken? What have we been deliberating? Give the bountiful the love that runs into the streets like water, slaking thirst a hand that cups to chunk the cop scanner like a rock skipped in the river. Alterity in heaven. Your ism feeds the paranoia of my ism, rooted in the ism that your kind has always had an ism against my kind. Your will be done, Lord, not in heaven as it is on earth. Cloud work. A symphony without strings is not complete. Heaven is decided by the white man, so duh, it's racist. If the blood of God is on our hands with no desire to be seen, we must be as gods ourselves to perpetuate a cosmic justice. 
I don't know if there's racism in heaven. All I know is that on earth there seem to be a lot of reasons they won't let you in. I often feel the confluence of everything going on in our country. Maybe we won't even look like humans in heaven. We've seen too many good people affected by this. I hope, I hope, I'd like to believe we will all be singing. Eight minutes, 46 seconds. Do you even assume ownership of air? That you choose whose life is sustained by it and whose is suffocated? That you use the breath of God to resuscitate the hate-filled relics and practices of your ancestors to destroy the descendants of mine. The heat from the dung of your apostasy rises and assaults his nostrils. The God you claim is unimpressed. The God you praise is not pleased. Cloud work. This poem is the chandelier piece that asks who gets to choose who can judge. The bird-shaped bourbon decanters, guilty until proven clean, colorful, alive, be called a suspect whether it exists. Heaven-inspired, innocent, beauty wouldn't have to just feel happy. Unique, screaming, thank you so much. Interesting, really, in heaven to love as ourself, many of which have tiny detriment. Everyone is guilty of something. We are all somewhere in the middle of the pu pure beauty of the glass below and the chaos of the objects above. Should we grow from God's image, free, ugly, broken light in heaven? To me, heaven would resemble calm. Racism is that someone piercing so that it was striking guilty until proven. This is the way, the question why. The stagnancy suspect, therefore, only in the case. We are not called, we are not called, think but not the way we should. Everyone could question liberation from police. I hope it's okay, which includes my eyes, shiny brutality. It's silent in the afterlife. And if the answer is, of course not, then it begs because of the juxtaposition. Matters, 40th and Pulaski, Chicago, Illinois. This one matters now, because the one who matters more splattered the brain matter of the one who matters now all over the wall, splattered with graffiti painted, painted by the one who matters now. These are the matters reported by the news anchor whose necktie is splattered with dots of rouge, much resembling the crimson splats of blood of the one who matters now, that was splattered onto the wall by the one who matters more. As a matter of fact, the name of the one who matters now, splashed across the headlines today, will not matter tomorrow. Bystander effect. He got out with a knife, I ran up off the sidewalk. Silhouette of tree veins, put your hands up in the air. Thought the day was done for, creation never came. Branchels, lung slap, honey, sap struck, tie the bees behind your back into a string to catch the moth that's caught inside your mouth. On the sixth day, God invented dry heave, flicker lamp to write, to walk by. Episodic ghost, I wrote you off and out of bedside. God, the dresser and the torch to wood, a limb that broke you out of brain cell into jail cell, homespun phantom, grain and photograph, in table and what fixture held up the doorway, held up the block, what structure made. No closure, only cufflinks in the fence. A barn of wire takes your concentration. Barb of flesh, light pole and tether, line my phone ring in the dark. A connection operator, please connect me to this week. I blasted music from my mouth. The speaker came, come back alive. The intersection ran live stream. This is the day that the Lord has made. The blue waves on the man who held a blade. Pedestal of superiority. We have forgotten or have simply chosen to ignore that we are a race of human beings. This oversight this intention renders us devoid of empathy, sympathy for, and incapable, incapable of solidarity with our brothers and our sisters. Petty divisions endorsed by government, applauded by denomination, unsanctioned by God, breeds mindset of superiority. And from these pedestals, we look away from our humanity and weigh down on the population of the those. From those heights, who can discern or who can care about the human, helpless cry of a mother for her babies? 
whose heads are smashed like melons on concrete foundations constructed by people who look like her. Nor does that height afford anyone any empathy for the outraged father who was compelled to contrive a new set of laws in order to circumvent and survive the law of the land. From that elevation, one is oblivious to the growling bellies of children, quiet only in comparison to their growling, growing bitterness manifested as temper tantrums in the classroom and anger and apathy throughout their lives. It becomes easy to gas, hose, burn, and shoot into faceless masses. There are no mothers, fathers, and children there, just roaches to be exterminated. Such is the view from the pedestal of superiority. Help us, Lord. Living on God's dime. See us where the heron cops the river for a loiter of fish, mouth cuffed half moon, yellowed evidence, no questions, no bayou but the city where we were, who watches over us and what is weaving like stitched silver in the river. What if we wove ourselves together, unlike chain link but a crystal cloud? What if the baby came and went with fragrance unlike honeysuckle? The city caught as stagnant water, watch our step and beat our sweat. What pearled between Adidas shell and gas pedal to brush off town? Nearby some future crossed its leg from fear or sense of fault politeness. Near, nearby 78 proof vessels hung like scraps on their suburban. The city wears smiles down, cop pa cops pave themselves authoritative as a road. To hold the body up, they hold you up streetwise and stagger. Clinch their holster every time they try to hold some collar on the blood. White count that works over the bones that hounds hunting the clawed out their own raged mouth. Where wages of existence is still death. You disconnect us from the body's urge to beat over as water wove the city. Our thirst for something more to cup than hands unlike synecdoche. Some hope unlike loose change between the heron's teeth. The shift, affliction persists until, violence thrives until, apathy endures until, minds, bodies, souls atrophy until, until she, until he, until they, until it, until we. Flow. We drive past the city limits for a living unlink the upper hand in cup, cuffed cathedral. We are unlike patch drop grass, a pass, passenger, a window. We were the tapestry that held the heat, a trespass laugh across gas stations of the cross under the river's laugh, the bottom like a bottle in God's mouth. You broke open to become the wind. Lesson in epoxy, I needed some glue. Not some basic adhesive like the creamy stuff I used for my construction paper projects in elementary school and then took a little taste of. Nah, I needed glue with staying power. I needed glue that could withstand stress. I needed glue that could withstand the test of time. I needed glue with strength. I explained all this to the clerk and he said, you need an epoxy. It sounded hardcore, professional-like. So I agreed, yes, yes, I want the epoxy. I need the epoxy. But hold up, clerk said, make sure you mix the contents of both containers well or nothing will stick. The elements are ineffective without one another. Of course, I had to test the veracity of his instructions. Clerk was right. One of the elements without the other yielded no staying power, could not withstand stress, would not withstand the test of time, was not strong. Combined, they had staying power, could withstand stress, could withstand the test of time and were strong. America, we need an epoxy. Combined, united, and coalesced, we have staying power, can withstand stress, can withstand the test of time. Combined, united, and coalesced, America, we are strong. Epistle to the Church of the Unholy. 78th and Cottage Grove, Chicago, Illinois. Greetings, brothers and sisters of the unsanctioned, unholy, unruly church of the mean-spirited. I admonish you. Down with fascist foolery that foists the burden of the law upon the masses and relegates them to second and third and fourth class citizenship 
within the kingdom. Down with Saturday evening and Sunday morning religious rituals, rife and obese with ceremonial idolatry and starved of the way, the truth, and the life. Down with glorificial praise from the very lips that club the sisters' and brothers' hearts to non-beating with litanies of judgment and condemnation. Down with kingdom overseers. Indeed, the people have become bored with the deacon boards, mother's boards, boards of trustees, and every other church clique that clicks the locks on the church doors to keep out sinners like me and he and she. Down with slick-tongued, bulging-eyed preachers who scream, eye on the prize, at their mega gatherings while their eyes roam all over the prizes of the young sisters. Ha <laughs> ha, but give me that revolutionary who chilled with hoes, cro crooks, crippled folk, and dudes who smelled like fish. Give me Martin and Malcolm's predecessor, who sermoned on the mount, proclaimed dreams in the valley, founded the first welfare program for the hungry in spirit, and declared fish sandwiches for everybody. I like the dude the Greeks dubbed Jesus, who called a spade a spade, exposed the hypocrisy of the Sadducee and the Pharisee, so the blinded eye of the heart and the soul could see the truth. Jesus, kick over the exchange change tables of these politician endorsing, palm greasing, soul auctioning 50C threeers. What's the going rate for souls these days, fellas? Ha <laughs> ha, Jesus, resurrect the holy civil rights movement. Whosoever will, let him come. Greek, Ethiopian Jew, your unmerited favor sees merit in us all. But preachers of fake news, trust and know, scourges will be scourged, and the same relentless, merciless fire you spew will warm your eternal home. Exhibit A. Metal shiv of dandelion, golden pig of idolized police. This is my life in camouflage, yellow ladder, cell doors, crumbled paper, wadded script. The death penalty is the code name underneath the chandelier. Mine is the sycamore tree, the first breath to be taken, drawn, to draw up heaven and the curtains that open and close, then hung from crosshatch cell in block print. Gilded fruit, sweat beads along the walls, netted dreams that bellowed out, I'm done with you, and you know who you are. Humanity skewed. We reduce our humanness to doing, to having, to the hue of man. We forget human being. We are before we do. We are before we have. We are beyond hue. We live. We move. We have our being. We are. Until I lost someone tonight. He will never be replaced. He was a person. He would wait until everyone in the room he would wait until everyone in the room talked. Not because he was shy or didn't care. No. He did it because in doing so, he gave everyone else's voice a chance to be heard. Who is going to let the LGBTQ and voices of color be heard now? Make them all bloom at the same time. Fear, heaviness, beauty, hope, detriment, overwhelming, desperation, change, liberation, stagnancy, beautiful, ugly, silent, screaming, tiny, huge, shiny, matte, free, controlled, broken, heaven, clean, light, colorful, throbbing, piercing, alive, free, stoic, total hyper-focus inside of the mind. Wherever heaven is or whoever you believe God to be, Liberation cannot be found within the confines of a system that was built on the condition of oppression. True liberation rests in the palms of its people. If there's racism in you, there's racism in heaven. Until we are e all equal, the lights will not be dimmed. I love you, I love you too. That concludes our reading for this evening. Um, if you have any questions, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, yeah. Otherwise, thank you for coming. <laughs>